brain and in your body. Now that we've established that glucose is the preferred source of fuel for the nervous system, I'd like to concentrate on a few of the other types of sugars that we ingest on a common basis and the impact that those have on brain function and body function. I'd particularly like to focus on fructose. Fructose, of course, is found in fruit. It's also found in the infamous high fructose corn syrup, which we will talk about today. It's worth pointing out that the concentrations of fructose in fruit is quite low compared to the concentrations of fructose in high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is approximately 50% fructose, which turns out to be an enormously high percentage of anything really, especially when we contrast that to the concentrations of fructose in fruit. Fruits have other types of sugars in them as well. Uh, you know, the sucrose content of most fruit and fruit juices is low. Um, although there are some fruits like, you know, melons, peaches, pineapples, and so, so forth that contain, uh, you know, a little less than 10% or so of sucrose. Um, things like mangoes can have a lot of sucrose, but typically the amount of fructose, fructose, I, I think is the proper pronunciation that people are always correcting me, fructose is anywhere from 1% to about 10%, right? It's really going to vary quite a bit. And many of you have probably heard of the so-called glycemic index, which is a basically a measure of how fast blood sugar rises after eating particular foods, et cetera. We're going to set aside the glycemic index for now. We will come back to it. It has some relationship to the concentrations of fructose in fruit. But the point that I'd like to make is that fructose as a sugar is handled very differently in the body than is glucose. But I also want to emphasize that because the percentage of fructose in fruit is rather low, especially compared to high fructose corn syrup, many people have demonized fructose, saying that fructose makes you fat or that fruit makes you fat. If you look at the data, that's not really the case. The fact of the matter is that the concentrations of fructose in fruit are so low that unless someone is consuming a lot of fruit or they're consuming a lot of fruit on the backdrop of a highly processed diet or a diet that has a lot of other stuff that they might not want to be ingesting, you can't really say that fructose is fattening. I don't really think that there's any basis for saying that fructose itself is bad. Now, high fructose corn syrup is a different issue and too much consumption of anything, but fructose included, whether or not it comes from fruit or otherwise, can be a problem for the ways that it impacts the neural circuits that process sugar not just glucose, but fructose. And so we'll illustrate those neural circuits in a bit and it'll become very clear to all of you, regardless of whether or not you have a background in biology or metabolism, nutrition or otherwise, why ingesting very high concentrations of fructose is not going to be a good thing for the way that your brain functions. One of the key distinctions between glucose and fructose is that fructose most likely cannot directly access the brain. It actually needs to be converted into glucose in the liver. And the way that conversion occurs feeds back to a set of hormones and neural pathways that we talked about earlier, which have a lot to do with appetite. And to just summarize what is now a, a lot of very solid data, fructose and specifically fructose has the ability to reduce certain hormones and peptides in our body whose main job is to suppress ghrelin. As you recall, ghrelin is a hormone that increases the longer it's been since we've eaten. And ghrelin makes us hungry by stimulating particular neurons in our hypothalamus. It actually makes us really want to eat and in particular really makes us want to eat sugary and fatty foods. Fructose reduces the activity of the hormones that reduce ghrelin. And so the net consequence of that is that fructose increases ghrelin. So although I, and I think pretty much everyone out there, save for a few individuals, agrees that calories in, calories out is the fundamental principle of weight loss, weight maintenance, or weight gain, ingesting fructose shifts our hormone system and as a consequence, our neural pathways within our brain, the hypothalamus, to be hungrier regardless of how many calories we've eaten, okay? Now, I also wanna be absolutely clear. This does not mean that eating an apple or eating a melon or eating a couple of apricots or something is going to make you hyperphagic, meaning it's going to make you just want to eat and eat and eat. That's simply not the case. But if you compare fructose and you compare glucose, not only are they metabolized differently in the brain and body, but in addition to that, fructose has this impact 
of reducing the hormones that reduce hunger hormones and neural circuits. And so fructose does have this kind of twist in its um, uh, phenotype, right? Or, or it's, I guess if fructose had a dating profile, this would be a kind of a red flag in, uh, in that profile. Because fructose itself, while it's actually a pretty good fuel source in, in many ways, and it's often packaged in things like fruits, which bring along fiber and vitamins and minerals that I think for many of us are, are th- things that we should be eating more of and ingesting more of, it can suppress the pathways that suppress hunger. And as a consequence, it can increase hunger. So current recommendations for most people are to eat more fruits and vegetables. But for those of you that are trying to control your hunger, ingesting a lot of fructose is probably not gonna be a good idea. Certainly ingesting it from high fructose corn syrup is not gonna be a good idea because of the enormous percentages of fructose in high fructose corn syrup, 50% or sometimes even more. But even from fruit, some people will find that fruit really quenches their appetite. Other people will find that fruit stimulates their appetite. And I suppose if you're trying to stimulate your appetite, then ingesting more fruit might actually uh, be advantageous to you. So fructose provides a bridge for us between a particular kind of sugar hormone function, in this case, ghrelin, and the hypothalamus. 